Many people call herons cranes, but despite their long legs and neck, they are very different. Herons have a unique neck structure for hunting, while cranes rely on teamwork to navigate their long migrations. Let's uncover the fascinating secrets of these birds. Herons and cranes have very different nesting habits. Herons build stick nests high in trees, often forming large colonies called rookeries. Their young remain in the treetops until they are grown to adult size and are ready to fly. Cranes, on the other hand, nest in wetlands, crafting simple ground nests surrounded by water. Their precocious chicks, called colts, leave the nest within hours of hatching and can even swim. Have you ever noticed the bump on the front of a heron's neck? That bump hides a spring-loaded secret. The neck of herons have specialized vertebrae that act like a spring-loaded hinge. They pull their neck into an S shape, waiting. When it's time to strike, they launch their head and bill forward with incredible speed and precision, perfect for spearing fish or other prey. The bump on a heron's neck is part of its spine that sticks out in the front. Most animals have their spine all in the back, but not herons. This special feature gives them a unique look and helps them hunt in their own special way. Herons and cranes have very different feeding habits. Herons are solitary hunters, standing motionless in shallow water to ambush fish, frogs, or other aquatic prey. Occasionally, they also hunt small mammals like mice in flooded or plowed fields. With their stealthy approach and lightning-fast strikes, Herons are expert fishers in wetlands, rivers, and coastal areas. Cranes take a more social approach to feeding. They forage in open fields and wetlands, using their long bills to probe soil for seeds, insects, and tubers. In summer, cranes form small family groups while feeding. During winter, they gather in large flocks to forage in corn stubble fields, turning mealtime into a noisy and lively communal event. Cranes migrate in large flocks, flying in formation high in the air. They use thermals to soar to remarkable heights, reaching altitudes of up to 12,000 feet. For cranes, migration is a family tradition, with young birds learning their routes from their parents. Herons, on the other hand, migrate alone or in small groups, flying much closer to the ground. They typically follow coastlines and waterways, stopping frequently to rest and refuel along the way. In flight, herons hold their necks tucked in a tight S. Cranes hold their necks straight out. Herons and cranes have distinct vocalizations. Herons make harsh, croaking calls, while cranes produce loud, resonant, bugle-like sounds that can be heard from miles away. Cranes' calls are amplified by their elongated trachea, which loops within the sternum, much like a French horn. This unique anatomy helps cranes communicate effectively during social interactions and courtship. Cranes have a distinctive bustle of long tertial feathers, which are inner wing feathers. These feathers drape elegantly over their tail like a Victorian skirt. Herons lack these prominent feathers. Herons have a short tail and streamlined rear that contrasts with the crane's more elaborate plumage. The presence or absence of this bustle is one of the most striking visual differences between cranes and herons on the ground. Now that you can tell herons and cranes apart, you may be interested in this short video on green heron the patient feeder.